What can we learn from horse training? I watched in amazement this past week as my daughter learned from the world-renowned Monty Roberts how to teach a horse to trust her and follow her by using very simple techniques. The question, of course, is do these techniques work for leaders who need their teams to follow them? Well, let's look at that on the Beeman Report for August 18th, 2014. Horses, like people, are keenly aware of the fight or flight reflex, although they're much more in tune with the flight reflex as they're known to be prey animals. A fair amount of horse trainers therefore use a combination of reward and punishment to get their horses to obey them and do what they want. However, Monty Roberts, a trainer so well known that his methods are used by royals like the Queen of England, has developed a new school of thought based on getting the horse to trust him and follow him voluntarily rather than by the old carrot and stick method. We, as business and family leaders, can learn a lot from Monty Roberts. True leadership comes from a fundamental trust that's created and reinforced by the leader directly. That is to say that the team following must believe the leader is doing things in their best interest at a minimum and therefore poses no threat to them or specifically no threat to the successful completion of their job. This trust is established over time by utilizing some very simple but important leadership skills that include active listening, mental patience in making decisions so as to ensure all of the facts are known prior to a decision being made, and openly and honestly communicating with the goals and the objectives of the group. These simple things so often overlooked establish a trust with team members, much like Monty does with his horses. Subpar managers and leaders have resigned themselves to the punishment reward method so commonly used, but the superior leaders achieve that title by building trust. Superior leaders typically lead by example more than just words, exactly as Monty shows his horses they do not need to fear their bridle and saddle, as he first and foremost is comfortable with them. He then doesn't impose his will on the horse, but rather he allows the horse the freedom to willfully accept his leadership. Sometimes in life, we learn to overcomplicate things. It's our nature. It's certainly part of the academic process. But learning simple lessons from a simple man known for whispering to horses will sometimes lead you to superior results.